On the liturgical calendar, this is an in-between day. On the one hand, this is the 12th day of Christmas. Tonight is 12th night, where often there are big, huge festivals and celebrations as a way to close the Christmas season. It is also the eve of Epiphany, which is tomorrow, um, where everything shifts as opposed to celebrating the birth and the life of Jesus. Epiphany calls us to ministry, to evangelism, in fact, to reaching out. It's all about Jesus. The, the icon, of course, is the wise man coming to see Jesus, Jesus, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles, he being the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, not just the sins of a small group of people. And therefore, all are invited to come and follow him. And that's why we have the gospel reading today, because Jesus is on the hunt. He, he decides, and I, I pay attention to John's vocabulary, he, he's walking, and he is deciding that he is going to go, as it says, to Galilee. He want, he's looking for people. He finds Philip. We don't know how he knew Philip. Maybe Philip was a disciple of John, some of conjecture. So they saw, he saw Jesus at his baptism at the river. We don't know whether there's been any kind of prior conversations between Jesus and Philip at all. But all it takes is Jesus to be able to approach him and a very simple call, follow me. And something happens to Philip because he gets so excited, he decides to go find Andrew and Philip. We found the Messiah. And before the end of the passage, you've got four or five followers of Jesus, you know, coming and all of a sudden beginning to circle around him as the cadre of the beginning of the new disciples, each of which are called and found in their own way. Some it's, he is the one who fulfills the law and the prophets, and an explanation given in a sense that says, this is what the scripture says, this is how Jesus fulfills it. For others, it's a miracle. Before you were under the fig tree, I saw you. How did you know that? You know, and was he over... I didn't see Jesus when I was over sitting under the fig tree. An example of very clear supernatural knowledge that God gave Jesus. And that was the door that opened him to know that there was something more going on than him just being a traveling rabbi. And the response, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. The two acclamations that fulfill what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah. And we began the service by praying, the collect, that we would share the divine life of him is the sort of central piece of that prayer. Because the assumption of the Epiphany season is that we're not just seeing what Jesus did, we're actually committing ourselves to be an instrument through which Jesus also continues to call people to follow him, to come and to know the Christ to serve others. And here's what I think about when I think about that call. What I notice about Jesus, and it flows all through the Gospel of John, is that there is a kind of inner self-containment about Jesus. There is in him that capacity to so receive from his Father that what flows out is service. It's gift. It's not manipulation. It's not trying to get somebody to do something that I want in that way at all. And in fact, that kind of manipulation devolves exactly into the kind of hate your brother condemnation that is given in the first chapter of, I'm sorry, the first epistle of John. In other words, if I'm going to share the divine life of Jesus and to be a channel through which others are invited to follow him, then there has to be something inside of me that is in fact secure in my relationship with God. And receiving from God the kind of forgiveness, the kind of peace, the kind of mercy, the kind of affirmation that allows me to walk into a day and say, I'm here to serve. In other words, whether my needs are met or not is actually quite beside the point. I'm here to serve. I'm here to give into the lives of other people and truly really trust that as I am giving, God's going to take care of the needs of my heart because, as we said in the psalm, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. 
And who are the sheep of his pasture? They're the people that the shepherd provides for, takes care of, and watches out for against the wolves, the pastures, all the stuff that you see in the Psalms. So if I'm going to be one who shares the divine life of him and be about this epiphany season, being available for God to use me and others, to reach out in service to one another, that others might come and follow him. Where this in fact starts is, God work in me the kind of inner peace and security in you that I might be free to step out. Not knowing what the results might be. Because as you know, sometimes that's acceptance, sometimes that's rejection, sometimes that's scorn, sometimes that's curiosity. You even see it in Philip. I love it. When, who goes, we have found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And what you don't see is him going, oh, well, well, wait a minute. Maybe he was also born of Bethlehem. There's this kind of, mm, come and see. There's no, let me try to figure out a different way to get at the question for you. There's a security even in the disciples that we see in this passage that in fact is called us to in fact be secure in Jesus. For God to do whatever is necessary in us for that to happen so that it's about service and giving and having the kind of inner peace and contentment that allows us to serve and a result to be a channel of the divine life that is calling other people to follow him. Amen. Amen.